Hello, this is Lynn O'Hara from National History Day, and I'd like to spend a few minutes today to help give you some strategies for searching with the Library of Congress. So whether you're a teacher searching for materials for your class, or a student searching for materials for your National History Day project. The library's website is loc.gov, and this is kind of your landing page for amazing treasure troves of information. Now keep in mind that the library has digitized millions of sources and probably has millions of sources to go. Most students start up here on the search bar in the upper right. Now my suggestion, I think we've got to keep in mind one really key point. The Library of Congress search engine is not the same as searching on Google. The library catalogs their materials with the names that they have when they went to the library. And because of that, we've got to kind of search a little differently than we would in a typical search engine. It's going to involve using sometimes bigger, broader terms. It's going to involve using different keywords or search terms. And it's going to involve doing some advanced searching to narrow down what it is we want to do. So I'm going to start up at the top, and let's say I'm researching the Great Depression. And there's an awful lot there. I'm just going to start there. If I search Great Depression in everything, I'm going to end up with something over 80,000 sources. Well, that's an awful lot. What I'm probably going to need to do is narrow that down. A couple things that I want to do. I want to make sure this bar that pops up on the left is going to be your friend. I want to make sure I'm clicking items that are available online, because unless I have physical access to the library, I'm not going to be able to get at them otherwise. And I'm going to have to narrow down. I could do some searching here and see, wow, 72,000 newspaper articles, 3,500 books, 1,500 periodicals. This is an awful lot, and I'm not really sure where to start. So one of the things that I think is really helpful about the library is the way that they're organized. If you take a look at this drop down box, you can see the different divisions of the library. You could look specifically for audio recordings, for books, for legislation, manuscripts, maps, newspapers, periodicals. There's so many different things going on simultaneously that I think it's effective to choose what it is you're looking for. So let's say I'm looking at the Great Depression, but I really want something visual for my class. So I'm going to choose Photos, Prints, and Drawings and hit that search button again. All right, what have we got here? 307 available online. Hmm, this that's a little more promising than 80-some thousand. So some things that I might look at. I might take a look here and narrow down in terms of time frame of when things were created. I might be interested in locations. It looks like there's 22 images from the state of Iowa. Hmm. Let's click on that and see what that does. Oh, this is kind of interesting. So what I can see is a series of Depression era murals and art that's created specifically in the state of Iowa. Hmm. That could be kind of interesting. That might be something I'm interested in. And then once I go into Iowa, if I notice, I could narrow down by county. I can narrow down by contributor, hmm, Carol Highsmith, that might be interesting, and different subjects that I might want to look at. And maybe I said, okay, you know what, I'm, I'm done looking at Iowa, I want to go back. So you know what, I'm going to take out Iowa, I don't need Iowa here, and maybe I want to look and see what's available specifically as part of the prints and photographs division. Hmm got some interesting things. I've got a political cartoon here. I have some photographs from the Farm Security Administration. Uh, I've got a sculpture. I've got a lot of different things. So one of the things you've got to be willing to do is kind of play around by looking at what you need. And then you might need to narrow down specific search terms to look for specific people, places, or time periods where things were created. Now, this does not take away from the primary source collections or the exhibitions, but this will often give you a deeper dive into different materials. Another place that I'm going to strongly encourage you to go is chroniclingamerica.loc.gov. So Chronicling America is this amazing newspaper database where they are working to digitize local newspapers from all over the country. 
Now, one thing that you're going to find, this is a database that's continually expanding literally every day. Um, there's a couple things that I think are really, really helpful here for students. One is their recommended topics list. So these are things that are commonly researched. I can sort it alphabetically by subject. And I want to see a lot of things that students might be interested in. And if I'm teaching a particular topic, let's say um, Carrie Chapman Cat and the women's suffrage movement, I've got all kinds of resources here that might be helpful, including search strategies and selected articles. Oh, this could be a great place to start my research on her. Now, the other thing I'm going to encourage you to take a look at at Chronicling America is the way that you search. You can do a simple search, but in my experience, the advanced search is far superior. This allows you to select particular states, particular newspapers. You can put in specific dates. So if you know what happened in your studying something that happened in Chicago on a particular date, you can search the Chicago newspapers. You can also search to see how people maybe in New York or San Francisco or Miami, Florida responded and thought of what they had to say about what was going on in Chicago on a particular date. These are resources that I'm going to really encourage you to play with as a teacher and encourage you to have your students research. Keep in mind, it's not one-stop shop. You don't tend to hit pay dirt on the first search. You've got to try different search terms and different search names and narrow down accordingly. As a general rule, I would not necessarily send students first to LOC.gov. They've got to know enough to know the names of the people. They need to know the names of the events. They also need to know if the names changed. So for example, World War I wasn't called World War I in 1917. It was called World War I later. So they're going to need to know to search World War I and search Great War. Those are the kinds of tips and tricks that I hope will get you started searching LOC as a teacher and encourage your students to do so for their National History Day projects.